I actually, I like this. I, I haven't gotten this, but as I was reading it, my first thought was, well, let me review what the first step was, you know? And so now I've got, you know, you're, you're, you're having me go back and look at that first email, which is most likely in the thread. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, I'm actually a big fan of your second email being one question. I mean, so, you know, I think this is even longer than my normal second email, even though it's extremely brief. Uh, but I actually, I actually don't have a problem with this. I, you're not calling them out to, you know, Oh, you know, I haven't heard from you. You, you haven't, you know, you're, you're ignoring me. Right. Um, and it asks them a simple question, you know, and, and, you know, gets, gets them to kind of think about how there might be a next step. So I'm, yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually a fan of this one. I don't know how you feel about it, Damien. No, I love it. I actually love it. I think you're right. I think the only thing I would do, well, the biggest thing I would do is I would take, I get rid of the thanks for your input line. I think it actually weakens it at the end. I think you want to end this on the question, right? I Let me know. Yeah, if you end on the question, this is a very, this is a very good follow-up email. I really like it. And again, because it, it kind of leads into the second one. Uh, the thing I don't like about the second follow-up email here is, is it does the thing that I don't like. It's passive aggressive. No one's, I haven't heard back from you, you know, and now you can be the creepy passive aggressive. I see you've opened my email and I haven't heard back from you. Well, that's, that's creepy. Like that's just, you know, so, I mean, you know, at, at best they know that we were tracking open and stuff like that and, and it still doesn't feel good or, you know, worst is depending on how educated and technical your user base is or your prospect base is, they might be like, how do you know that, you know, like so that can put some fear into them. But more importantly, like you're putting, you're projecting your trash onto them, your head trash, right? So of course they, you, you can't guilt them into responding to you. Like, what do you think is going to happen with that? You think you're going to make them feel guilty they haven't responded to you and you're going to get them to respond? I just don't see how that ever works. I just don't. I personally, it's the email I get. I will forgive a lot of sins. I mean, I'll delete it. I won't respond to them, but I'll, I'll forgive a lot of cold email sins. The one that makes me, that upsets me when I get one is that passive aggressive tone, right? That, oh, why haven't you got back to me yet? Right? Like that is just, that is the best way to get me to push spam versus delete. Yeah, that's a great point. I actually got a cold email this morning, uh, literally just a few hours ago from someone saying, I think, thanks for opening my previous emails. <laughs> It was, it was very strange, which, you know, is a, is a good lead in what you're talking about, you know, the kind of the, you know, I didn't hear back from anyone, right, or haven't heard back from you, which is the second example here. And that's how it leads in. I'm writing to follow up on my email. I didn't hear back from anyone on the team, like, could not have started that any worse, in my opinion. <laughs> Obviously, you're following up, right? Like, you don't right. need to write in my email in your email to me that I'm writing to follow up. Uh, just just, you know, jump into it, right? Uh, and then, you know, I will say we've kind of pounded on this, you know, do your own homework and don't ask for, you know, an introduction to somebody right out of the gate. But I, I do think there is perhaps a place for that in your follow ups. You know, if your follow ups are still going out because they haven't responded, um, that that can be an OK time to ask if there is, you know, a different person that they should talk to. But I think you should go in assuming that the person you're emailing is the right person for you to talk to. It's a great point, and it's all in how you ask it. And I agree with you. I think that you know, email three, four, or five in the sequence. If you go, if you are very, you know, if you're very clear on, you know, Bob, I've been reaching out to you because I thought you were responsible for this function at this company. If that's not the case, can you point me in the right direction? Like that's so much better than you know than your first email being, hey, can you point me in the right direction? It's now I've reached out to you two or three times, thinking you're the right person because you know I've done my research and thinking that this would be your area of responsibility, right? But hey, if you know this and you know, whatever your value prop is, if this value prop is not in your area of responsibility, could you let me know who it is? You know, so I stop bothering you. Like I think that I think that that worded correctly could be very powerful. But like you said, it needs to be you know step four and step five, not step one, right? What I love. Um, about your example right there, I thought, I mean, what a, what a great way of phrasing it because you're, you're simultaneously saying, I've emailed you and I haven't heard back. Right. Without coming out and saying that. Right. Right. Like you're the re you know, this is the reason I reached out to you because I thought you handled this. Uh, you know, but 
clearly it's not right because like you haven't responded without without saying that you're saying it you know so yeah i think it's all in the way you because i think it's, it's the phrase it's how you phrase it because also like the empathy you have like you know what is your objective if your objective when you phrase it the other way your objective is to try to make them feel guilty well that's stupid like you're not gonna make them feel guilty and it's not gonna get what you want so you want to phrase it the way that's gonna get them to take the action you want like i ideally you want them to take action right and so the best way to do that is put yourself in their shoes so now you're saying okay they haven't opened the first two or three emails i've sent them there's a disconnect here like there's a reason they're not you know so it's either i'm doing a really bad job of explaining what we do right or how we can help or how i understand their unique problems right or they're not the right person right and if and if, if it's either of those problems let's find that out right Let, let's figure it out let's figure it out that i haven't done a good job of explaining you know how well i understand them or i've got the wrong guy or, or girl right I mean, i'm talking to the wrong person and if i at, if i'm trying to say instead of trying to guilt them into passing me on because some trick or technique i've learned if i if my objection objective really is hey i want to get to the right person because i want think that we can help your company solve these problems right then that's a much that's a much more powerful way to approach it i think